Hello students, we are back for our second lesson for modern physics. We are going to look at a cathode ray oscilloscope. So we have two pictures there, the actual CRO, which we normally use in the hospital, and the second diagram which shows which we use in physics for study purposes. So the CRO has several parts, which include the cathode, the anode, the fluorescent screen, the electron beam, the heating filament, which we use in our other purposes, as we shall be seeing when we go forward. So those are the two diagrams showing cathode ray oscilloscope. So a cathode ray has three main parts, which include electronic electron gun. This consists of the following parts. The cathode, it is used to emit electrons. The control grid, it is used to, it is connected to a low voltage supply and used to control the number of electrons passing through it towards the anode. There's a second part, which is the anode. The anode is used to accelerate the electrons and also focus the electrons into a fine beam. Since the control grid controls the number of electrons moving towards the anode, it, con it controls the brightness of the, spots, the spot on the screen. So we have the second part of the CRO, which is a deflecting system. This consists of the X and Y plates. They are used to deflect the electron beam, horizontal and vertical respectively. The X plates are connected to the CRO to a special type of a circuit called a time base circuit. So we have a time base when you are looking at a deflecting system of a CRO. The last part of the CRO includes a fluorescent screen. This is where the electron beam is focused to form a bright spot. The coating on the screen converts kinetic energy into light energy and produces a bright spot when the electron beam is focused on it. The graphite coating of the inner wall of a cathode ray tube traps stray electrons emitted from the screen and makes a potential max makes the potential in that region uniform. So we have three parts of the CRO, which includes, includes the electronic gun, the deflecting system, and the fluorescent screen. Those are the three main parts of the CRO. Now we're going to look at some uses of a CRO. Measures AC and DC voltage. It is used in measurement of frequency. It is used in measurement of phase difference. We also use it in TV set to display pictures on the screen. So we have another device which uses thermionic emission, which is called the X-ray tube. These are electromagnetic radiation of short wave length. They are produced when fast moving electrons are suddenly stopped by a metal target. They, the process involved in the production of X-ray is the reverse of photoelectric emission. So it's the opposite movement of electrons which leads to the production of X-rays. X-rays have properties which include they can penetrate matter, they travel in a straight line at the speed of light, they are not deflected by electric and magnetic fields since they are not charged, they can ionize a gas increasing its conductivity, they affect photographic plate or film, they cause some substance for, to fluoresce, egg zinc sulfide. Now, fluoresce means giving light or glowing. 
They are electromagnetic radiation of short wavelength. So we have some two diagram, the actual tube, which is an X-ray tube, and the physics diagram, which we use for study purpose. So as you see on the diagram, the X-ray tube has the metal shielding, which is the outer surface, has a glass tube, which is evacuated to form a vacuum. It has the anode and cathode where electrons move from the cathode and go to the anode. It has those electrons which are able to move from the heated filament, they go to the metal anode and they are deflected from X-rays. So we have two diagrams, the actual X-ray tube and the physics diagram for the X-ray tube. Production of X-rays. The cathode is heated by heat but is heated to emit electrons by the process of thermionic emission using a low voltage supply. A high PD is connected or supplied across the anode to accelerate the electrons towards the anode. When the cathode rays strike the metal target, about 90% of their kinetic energy is converted to heat energy and 1% is converted x-rays so that's the explanation of how x-rays are produced in an x-ray tube when the electrons move they strike the metal target and the metal target will produce x-rays after being deflected energy changes in the x-ray tube so we have some energy changes which takes place in an x-ray tube Electrical energy is converted to heat energy in the filament. It is converted to kinetic energy of the electrons. Later on, we have the X-ray produced after heating the metal target. That's a process which involves energy changes in the X-ray tube. We have different types of X-rays. We have the soft X-rays and the hard X-rays. Soft X-rays are X-rays of low penetrating power, i.e. low frequency and long wavelength, produced when a low accelerating PD is applied across the X-ray tube, while the hard X-rays are X-rays of high penetrating power, i.e. that is to say, high frequency short wavelength, produced when a high accelerating PD is applied across the X-ray tube. Those are the two types of X-rays we have. So however much you use these X-rays, they have some health hazards, which may include frequent exposure of X-ray can lead to dangers like they destroy cells, especially the hard X-rays, they cause gene mutation or genetic change, cause damage to the eyesight and blood, cause cancer, e.g. leukemia, which is the cancer of the blood, produce deep, deep-seated skin burn. So when you expose to the X-ray, they can burn you and cause skin burn. So we have some safety precautions we normally take when we are handling X-rays. Avoid unnecessary exposure of X-rays. Keep exposure time short as possible. The X-ray beam should only be restricted to parts of the body being investigated. Soft X-rays should be used on human tissues. Workers dealing with X-rays should wear lead shielding jackets. So X-rays cannot penetrate lead, that's why we use lead jackets. Exposure should be avoided for unborn babies and very young children. Uses of X-rays. So we have different categories of usage of X-rays which include hospital usage or use, industrial use. We have X-ray crystallography, then sexuality. 
under hospital use we use x-rays to investigate bone fractures to detect lung tuberculosis used to locate swollen metal objects used to detect metal used to detect internal ulcers along digestive tract used to treat cancer especially when it has spread by radio radiotherapy so normally use radiotherapy to treat cancer and we use x-rays under industrial use they are used to detect cracks in engines we use them in inspection of tire tires of car used to locate internal imperfections in welding joints egg pipes and storage tanks we use x-rays to detect cracks in buildings under crystallography we use to determine internal atomic spacing in crystals this is done by x-ray diffraction so we shall look at that when it comes to near five x-ray diffraction security x-rays are used to check luggage for potential dangerous weapons and smuggled items at airports and custom security checkpoints so dear learners we have some exercise for trial and you'll be able to try to do that work it is it's with respect to the work we have learned under x-rays and the cathode ray oscilloscope which involves describing the mode of operation of a CRO and you also read about the x-ray the CRO time base the x wind time base is switched on and off during the x and y plates so it's very important when you come to number two to know more about the time base so for more information you can visit the links and you get more information concerning the CRO and the X-ray tube. Thank you.